everyone, my name is Morgan Isaac Bear from Mirror Science Lab, and today it's problem number two, some funny calculus problems I found that uh, have some cool, unique new concepts, and therefore calculus BC, by the way, and I hope you'll enjoy them with me as well. So this one is about parametric functions. So what are parametric functions? Well, parametric functions are parametric functions. Well, I mean that parametric functions basically give you the function of the x and the function of the y with relation to a certain variable. And with these, you can find the with the, with these you can find the slope of a, a line defined by these parametric functions and you can find the double derivative of the curve that is defined by these two functions. Well, what are we here to do today? Well, let's say uh, we have 0 less than or equal to t is less than or equal to 13. So, in that time interval, we have our little particle buddy over here. Particle buddy is going in an elliptical curve defined by these two parametric functions. But eventually, at t equals 13, our particle buddy decides to go out of the path and instead leaves on the tangent line of the curve at t equals 13. So what we're trying to find here is the slope of the line that the particle leaves on. Now the thing is, all we have to basically do here is find the tangent at t equals 13. Why? Because it said that our little particle buddy was leaving on the tangent line to the curve at t equals 13. So that means all we have to do to find the slope is to find the slope of the tangent line at 13. Hopefully that makes sense to you, even though I used a lot of 13's unlucky number in that sentence. Alright, so how do we find the slope? Well, if you remember, the slope can be written as dy over dx. And here's the thing. Why don't we tra try taking the derivative of one of these? y equals 4 sine t, for example. Taking the derivative on the left side is pretty ordinary. We have the constant. We keep it. The derivative of sine is cosine. And we put the t over there. No need for the chain rule. But the y, well, this is the derivative of y with respect to t when we're differentiating. So it becomes dy over dt. Look familiar? I'm sure it does. Now, let's try and do the same thing with the x. x is 3 cosine t. So, that means the left side is going to be the derivative of cosine is minus sine. So we get minus 3 sine t, then dx over dt. I'm starting to see the idea here. Are you? Well, let's see. We have dy over dt and dx over dt. What can we do with these? Well, what's very elegant is this. We can write this expression. Voila, that gets us to dy over dx. And if you don't see why, this is a reminder that we can basically cancel out the 1 over dt's on both sides. So this just leaves us with dy over dx. So what is dy over dt over dx over dt? Well, dy over dt is 4 cosine t. Dividing that by dx over dt is minus, let's put that in the front, 3 sine t. And now, all we need to do to find the slope of the tangent line at 13 is plug in t to be 13. And that's it. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Oh, and we can actually simplify this to be minus 4, third, 4 over 3 tan t or minus 4 over 3 cot t. And then when we plug in, we get minus 4 over 3 cotangent of 13. That's it. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Hopefully, you found that problem fun. And we're going to do problem number three soon. Saborno Isaac Bari, who is known as the god of mathematics, became the youngest professor in the history of mankind.